This is the girl that's 20 years old that's never been in a relationship before, right? 12 and a half minutes. Does she even know about me or is this just a script written by her staff? So today, guys, we're going to be talking about one of the most expected and predictable relationship dramas that everyone on the internet saw coming. We're talking about streamer destiny and the demise. Everyone, there's no way she even knows who I am. And I like how she's like, I'm so familiar with these people. <laughs> Okay, so if you do not know who he is, Destiny is an OG streamer who has been making content for over a decade. I've reacted to some of his stuff in previous episodes, but he and his wife, Melina, were very publicly in an open marriage where either of them could sleep with whoever they wanted, whenever they wanted, yada, yada, yada. And they were very, very proud of this publicly open relationship. So much so that they would literally go on to podcasts together just to defend their relationship and show how happy they truly were and how awesome it was and how it really, really worked in their favor. Just pretty normal stuff. I feel like this was usually just in response to people constantly attacking me slash us, but... <laughs> for, you know, your average conventional happy couple. That happens all the time, obviously, that you have to stand up in front of a public audience and defend your relationship at all costs. Anyway, watch this clip. I mean, when people attack it all the time, which is so funny because she would know, well, actually she wouldn't because she's like 20. You would know this is a Christian because people attack Christian marriages and shit all the fucking time too, right? So from the whatever podcast. The five best sexual partners that I've had in my life were all the people that I were in the long-term relationships with. So like on a one night stand, like it's- Oh my God, it's crazy. Almost like having an emotional connection with the person you're sleeping with. They no, the emotional connection helps a little bit, but sexual um, uh, connectivity over a long-term, it's not just the emotional connection, it's the actual physical training and practice you get and the preferences that you develop for other people's bodies that you're in a relationship with for a long period of time. I don't know why you would just think it's an emotional connection. Um, but okay. Your relationship all Well, I know why. It's because this girl is 20 and she has like a body kind of like zero or one. <laughs> Awesome. Anyway, watch this clip from the Whatever Podcast. The five best sexual partners that I've had in my life were all the people that I were in the long-term relationships with. Like on a one-night stand, like it's- Oh my God, it's crazy. Almost like having an emotional connection with the person you're sleeping with makes an impact. Oh my God, that's insane. Almost like commitment. It's a good thing. Sorry, okay, we're gonna go on. He hasn't even really got into the good stuff yet, but- <gasps> On a one-night stand, like it's hard to know. Like one night stands are even that fun sexually, depending on what you're looking for. I, I can agree that the longer you're with somebody, the better sex gets, so why is she not enough? Why is she Ooh. not enough? Guys, that's Billy Ray Brandt. She's the star of Lady Ballers that Daily Wire just put out. She's so good. And that was just a hard-hitting question because his wife is literally sitting right next to him. Right next to him. Why I mean, like, it's kind of like, yeah, it's kind of like you've got like a close friend, but then you've got other friends. It's also so weird when I, uh... I feel like if I was doing debate prep for somebody and I was gonna go on a show, I feel like I would try to think of like a pretty unique angle or something to kind of like confront them with because why would I do something that's been done a million times before? Because I thought I'm gonna be the one to land that blow. It's so crazy that like, she's like, what an amazing quad, but you've never thought of this. Like, yeah, does this shit not bother you? Like if I saw people talking shit about my relationship choices, it would drive me fucking nuts. Um, something that I've said before is I think the farther people's opinions are from reality, like the more irritating or the less irritating it becomes because it's like so wacky that it's just kind of like funny, I guess. So. And speaking of how happy and stable they obviously are as a couple, I was reminded of this viral clip from last year where you can truly see just how much Destiny loves watching his wife flirt with other men right in front of him. Take a look. Mel time. It's, it's, it's Mel time. Why? There's literally, it's so funny on these clips because once you've decided like what's going to happen. Oh, actually, I guess now that me and Mel are separate, now I can say what I really feel about this. Okay. I still don't give a fuck. Who the fuck cares? It's also so weird that you have to imagine, like, if I'm okay with my wife f***ing people, why would I be upset about her dancing with a friend? Get the life draining from his eyes. Because the funny thing, too, is that, like, if I was here, like, if I was here laughing, it would be like, look at how much he's coping with how, even though he's so miserable, blah, blah, blah. It's like... <laughs> Like this obviously went viral for a reason. It was at this moment that everybody collectively on the internet went, oh dude. Also, huh, also, big prediction. I don't think this clip would have went viral if ABBA wasn't black as well, just saying. Both ABBA and Melina were actual dancers too. Yeah, I know, that's why it's so stupid, yeah. Here's one more clip from the Whatever podcast when they were on and it just, it aged perfectly. Like I'm sure he is punching himself over saying this. God forbid this happens, will it be fun if this open relationship ends up causing things to fall apart down the line if one of you guys finds yourself in a... Uh... Also guys, this is Sovereign Bra on Twitter and I've talked about him before, his tweets are fantastic. He seems great, he's dope. I reacted to fantastic. his stuff on Whatever pod before. That's who he is if you need a face behind the tweets, but... This is good. An entanglement, so to speak, with, no, some, that, with, yeah. with somebody who you might find a deeper connection with than the other person. Like, if that causes the relationship to, to fall apart, that probably wouldn't be very fun. No, it would be horrible. And yeah. it would be sad. But monogamous relationships have the same issue, the same right? Issue. How many times do you have, like, a man that falls in love with a coworker or a woman that falls in love with a friend that she spends too much time with? Like, monogamous people have to put up a lot of boundaries on their relationships, they too, they because do. they worry about the same types of things, you know? Do you guys have a high degree of confidence that your marriage will last for decades? I mean, I married her without a prenup, so I <laughs> hope so. <laughs> the tension. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. The way that they grabbed each other's hands. Also, yes. 
monogamous relationship. What is, there's so much reading into everything here. Like the way that they grab each other's hands. Yeah, we grab each other. I'm a super touchy person. Yeah, what is the what is the reading on everything? And also, what am I supposed to respond to? Like, do you think your marriage will last? I mean, yeah. I mean, obviously, I hope so. We're married. But I would say that even if I'm not married, with a relationship, if I was with a girlfriend, like, you think you guys are gonna be dating forever? I mean, I hope so. <laughs> she lives with me. Like, it's such a weird fucking um. Yeah, it's such a weird. Do you think she'd be down to have a talk, Brett? I don't know. I, I don't think she really knows who I am. I'm pretty sure that most of the script is probably prepared by people at the uh, Daily Wire, be my guess. You say that Balkan Games made a video on your divorce? No, I don't need to watch everybody's fucking commentary on my, <laughs> my divorce slash life, Jesus. I'm good. It's for some people it's good. Yeah, true, true. But my, my whole ideology beforehand was that it's better to not than go. And I think that was proved right, like, it's not necessary, it's asking for help. And help is a sign of weakness, and I don't want to be weak. You know, it's okay to ask for help, but when you prefer not asking for help than asking for help, is that simple? It's not as black and white. I did it for. We need to just do like a whole. We need to do like a '90s, an '80s, '90s, and early 2000s run through of like good masculine movies. I feel like I've seen. Am I crazy? I feel like I've seen this scene like 20 times in action movies or something. Where there's either a little boy or a girl or a guy or somebody will say something where it's like, oh, like, uh, I want to be just like you because and the, and the dad or whatever is like, you know, why is that? And the little child is like, because you're never afraid. And the dad says something along the lines of like, you know, not being afraid isn't what makes somebody brave. Uh, it's doing the right thing in the face of bravery or whatever. You know, it's like, it, there's always like a speech like this. There's always something like this where it's like, no, like it's okay to be scared. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay for these things. The idea that these things are inherently not masculine is so cringe and stupid, I think. Ugh. Rocky is actually a pretty positive example of masculinity. Bro, I, did you guys fight with me on this when I brought this up a long time ago? I feel like you did, and now you're going to say you didn't, and then I'm not going to believe you. Um... God, this movie was so good. This was such a good movie. I hate everybody that disagrees with me on this. This was such a good movie. Creed? Creed 1. Creed 2, whatever. It was okay, I guess. Um, This movie sucked. Oh, good. At least Rotten Tomatoes agrees with me. Rocky, is it Rocky 5 was the one where he gives that speech to his son? I hated this movie. I thought it was bad. Forgive me for prying, but am I right in thinking that you do, in fact, allow yourself to form emotional attachments with people you meet as part of the open relationship? You're not just having mindless, de uh, detached sex with as many people as possible, like Brett is making out. Um, I've done that. I've done probably, I would say two to three months ago, I was pretty unhinged in terms of, like, number of partners I was seeking. I think there was probably a one to two month period where uh, it was a lot. Um, but I do try to seek out people that I'm more friendly with. It's just the, the difficult thing is that, like, um, people that I seek out that I end up being friendly with that I have hookups or connections with it's hard to like keep that in an appropriate space because then these people want to like obviously start dating or they start dating somebody else and then I just can't hook up with them anymore so it's like yeah I don't know we'll figure it out I just need to join some fucking polycule I need to be the third that's what I really need I realize that I think some guy like I think some guy posted that comment as like an insult to me on some reddit thing was like oh man destiny needs to be the cucker some third blah blah, blah. and i was like actually you know what being the third in a poly relationship that actually might be the perfect role for me because <laughs> then i just hang out with a girl every now and then i obviously something long term and then she can go hang out with her main partner all the time maybe that would be the the slotted perfect perfect role 